what we're really talking about are uh, creating neural pathways. We're talking about wiring the brain for specific skills. So here's the insight. <clears throat> it's impossible for you, the parent, to do this for your kid. Great. <laughs> you can't do it. And you never could. Think about it. When your child was learning to walk, who had to do the work? They, you had to wait until they took their first step. You had to wait. Yeah. You can encourage them. Yes. They, you, you know, you could walk around and they can see you walking. That's the best you can do. Mm. You see, you can't, you can't make them walk. You know, yeah. they have to want. And, you know, the wonderful thing is the very important. The wonderful thing about little kids is that they are fantastically motivated to, to do all these things. Yes. But they're motivated to grab, get. They're motivated to go there because that's something over there they want. They're motivated. Yeah. I mean, it's impossible to be more motivated. Um, but he, unfortunately, that motivation is an internal motivation. is is really not there with all teenagers regarding the prefrontal cortex wiring and development. They don't. Under, they don't even know what a prefrontal cortex is. They don't know what those functions are. They don't know how it works. They don't know that they, they have to do it repeatedly while they're young. They don't know that the window closes for this foundation development mm. in their early 20s or, or perhaps sooner. Uh, they don't know any of this stuff. All they know is, where's my smartphone? You know? Yeah. And, and so where's the motivation to do the work? It's different with the prefrontal cortex. That's an important <laughs> principle too. So yeah. that's why, you know, if they were all super motivated to be to do smart things and plan and organize and and solve problems and think things through and get creative, if they were all every kid was motivated like crazy to do this, they'd all end up brilliant. But exactly. they don't. No. Okay. So as adults, we have to achieve this understanding of the process. And and to do things that we know will help them do the thinking that will create the circuits. And I just told you one, it's, it's a skill called asking open-ended questions. Yeah. You know, an open-ended question is a question that you can't answer with yes or no or some fact. You it's a question to. that gets people to you have to do thinking. You have to think. Um, you could ask a kid, oh, well, what are some of the possible ways that we could get this done? There's no one answer to that. There's no yes, there's, there's no no. It makes them think about, okay, well, let's see, you know. <laughs> and that's what you want them to do. Uh, so that's a skill a parent can have or uh, a teacher could have. Yes. Unfortunately, in the United States, we have an education system that that requires kids to pass these tests. And so the teacher's livelihood depends on whether they do well in these tests or not. So they're teaching them amazing quantities of facts. Mm -hmm. And not all of them are teaching them how to think. Yeah. They're not teaching the how and the why, and they're not asking questions in class to get them to think about it. They're just passing out the information in a lot of cases. Yeah. But teachers can be very helpful. Um, a mentor, a relative, a, a neighbor who happens to take an interest can be very helpful. Yeah. But that's one of the skills for a parent. That's one of the things you can do is asking open-ended questions to get them to think. And, and there are other things you can do. And it's a great opportunity if parents understand this dynamic. They have this ability mm -hmm. to find real reasons to have quality time as a family unit or as a one-to-one -one with a yep. child because it's part of that developmental process. We're lucky here in Scotland that um, there's a new curriculum um, that they're teaching now called the Curriculum for Excellence. And part of that message is to try and get the kids to understand maths and do their English around various topics. So you would, you would let's say, learn about the Egyptians and then all the lesson would be around an Egyptian theme, but maths would be maybe trying to measure a pyramid or, you know, do calculations that way. So that learning is, is on multi-levels rather than just 
one plus one is two and Y E S spells yes, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so there is that, but it's, it's a new curriculum. So it's still coming in, but mm -hmm. the hope is I think that there would be more of the opportunity to ask those questions and get the kids thinking. Yeah. I, that's a fabulous way to learn is to, is to bring in all different kinds of learning into one project or one focus. And that's beautiful. Um, there's one other simple thing you could do that would make a huge difference. What is that? I call it.